hi everyone welcome back to my channel so today i'm going to be showing you how to make this gingerbread advent calendar house that i've designed it's really cool it's large it's got all the drawers all the way around the house and it's all been engineered to come together which you'll see in a moment the front of it i'll show you the front so you've got drawer there a drawer there and you can see they're all like secludedly built in secludedly there's a word um so they're all in there they're re it's a really sturdy box the gingerbread people are also little boxes which is really cool and you don't have to do gingerbread i've got a design where the square is the same size so if, and i've got separate numbers so if you don't want to do the gingerbread people then you don't have to now i haven't used any dolls i've designed it all as pdf and jpegs that you can download and make oh like gems fell off and gone on the bottom never mind um it's got a little porch on there as well which you don't have to add so i've done lots of things to make it easier so you can add it you don't have to add it things like that the chimney's also a box so if i pop in my scoring tool you'll see that it's actually quite a deep box so and you've got your chimney lid all the little boxes like i say they're super super sturdy i've doubled them over when you print it out all the um print out is going to be on the reverse side so everything goes inside of the box so you've got six on each side of drawers so if i take them out you, again on the side they're all the same so when you take them out you can see that it's nice and sturdy now you can put quite a good size of thing inside of here now i do have a little ruler somewhere because i can't remember what they are um i designed it a while ago but i got covid and got unwell so they're about an inch and a half <laughs> inch and an eighth <laughs> I, I kept my teeth in covid i just can't talk anymore so they're like an inch and an eighth roughly wide um i'm going to show you how to put it all together and make it and make the drawers and everything and make the little backing bits everything put the chimney how to put it in how to build the box up so it might be a bit of a long tutorial but it's going to be worth it so let me show you what you get as printouts i'll just grab those now so you're going to be getting a basic instruction sheet so it just um gives you just a the order of doing it but you'll probably find the way you want to do it but obviously you're going to have to cut print everything and cut it all out etc so even with the snow you'll see because I've, I've designed all the snow and the poles for the side and everything you've got a score line and don't worry about the black line just cut close to them because obviously you've got the measurement of where the drawers need to go but you can cut inside them a little bit it'd be fine but don't matter if you can still see black because you are going to be using the back it's a score line through the middle because you've got to score them so you've got your face snow i might actually label these before i make it a download it isn't on here because this is my prototypes if you like but i think i'll label where they all go it's quite obvious really but it might help and then you've got all the artwork so you've got your gingerbread men now what we're saying about the house so this is the porch snow and this is the porch now this one has got snow on it so if you didn't want to make the little porch and add the snow separately because you don't like fussy cutting then just cut around that one and then that can go straight on cut the hole up for the middle there's your number 24 this is the only one that the number has to stay for the door because it's the same color and the same size to fit in there um then everything else you've got all your numbers there there's two extra numbers so you've got 11 and 3 on here so i've done a different 11 and 3 in case you don't want to use the gingerbread people as the two front doors the two drawers are the side of the front door then we've got the um this is the porch and then you've got one of your sides you've got the side with the chimney you've got the, the that's the front the first front and there's plain gingerbread people there if you want to just cut them out and decorate myself and obviously i printed mine onto craft card this one is the one i'm going to be using it's got the smaller drawers because i'm going to be showing you how to put the gingerbread people on and then this one includes the small drawer and the small um back end if you like the box that it, the drawer goes into and this one is the bigger boxes and obviously you can have to print out quite a few of these so yeah make sure you've got enough cardstock of the color you want to use i think craft card looks quite good with it but it is obviously up to you so you've got two of the backing boxes and two of the drawers and then you just cut them all out and this is going to be the chimney and like i said i'm going to label them all chimney the chimney lid and then the other small box for the gingerbread person person because you could do two boys you do girls so choice is yours so what we're going to do 
is I'm going to show you how to make it. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and I've cut out all of the pieces. And you'll see in a minute that I've added the boxes to all of the other three sides. I'm just going to add them to this one. And you'll see you've got the print there, the score line. There was black lines here that I've cut out um, with a craft knife. I just use a little ruler, craft knife, pair of scissors, glue. That's about it really. And a scoring tool if you want to. But I'll show you how I do it all and everything. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Just bear with me. So this is the back of the front of the gingerbread house. This is going to be one of the large size drawers. So this is a drawer. So you cut them out. You've got all the score lines, like I said to you. So all the score lines are on there. You've just got a glue in fold. And I'll show you how I did mine. And then all your back ends. So these go at the back of this, which we're on. We've got it face down. So we're going to make one of those to put on the back. I've already got some things made because it, otherwise the tutorial will take too long. Then we're going to have to make a little box. So you can see this is for the gingerbread people so that's the chimney top which we'll come to in a minute it may not it may be out of view and there's the smaller box you can see there's a big difference on when you're doing these little ones here so what we need to do is i'll show you how to make up so when you've cut out your backing boxes so like i say they're on the sheet so you've got two of each on the sheet like that with all the um pictures etc so you'll know what they are and then what you've got to do and it does tell you in instructions some little tips on it so you want the right side to be facing down like that because all of the score lines you want to be on the back of the box you don't want them to be on the inside so what you're going to do is push all these that's the right side so when i do my once i've cut them all out when I, what i do to score them i don't use a scoring tool or anything like that I'll just take a ruler, line it up to the score. Uh, it's like a skinny steel rule. And then I can make all my scores and they all go one way. Just line it up like that, push against it. And then you can fold them back the way they need to go. So it's all going to come in like this. And then these ones are going to stick out. So when you're on the right side, they go back. So those four sides go back and these two tabs on each of the ends come in. And then all we need to do is add some glue to the right side because these are going to be because this is a box it's going to go like that you don't want to see that if i put it on the inside you're going to see it when you look into the house so you know when i took the drawers out and i showed you the inner bit which you'll see in a minute you want it to be here you want it to be smooth and nice and also it won't stop the drawer from working and things like that so on the right side of the boxes that you're making for the drawers to go into you're going to put glue just on those tabs like that so just on the four tabs and then always rub it in i always use my baby finger if you've watched me before it's my built-in tool so need to look after it need to ensure it <laughs> so then you just pull them all up and then these two are just going to wrap around and i've designed it so that you don't have to do any measuring or anything like that you just print cut and make and glue together and obviously this is craft card it's very fibrous it depends what card you're using so as you can see it's not sticking but it will in a minute it, it takes just a few more seconds i always like put it down let it go come off and then go back and squash it and you'll see now is taking so i just need to let it set so that's already one box that goes on the back so there's one of those and i've already done another one that size so we've got two there and then we need one for this piece here so we've got our three there now we've got to make a smaller one so it's exactly the same thing just on a smaller scale so we've got to put the glue on the right sides of these score it all first with your ruler or whatever you want to use if you want to use a scoring tool you can it's entirely up to you so just putting glue on the right side there and we're going to send it around the back smear it down i use my baby finger to do this because it's when i do my like put it's not being used it's out of the way i'm holding it out of the way it's like posh crafting 
one one has a sip of one's drink and one points at one's baby finger that's what i'm doing i'm a posh crafter what can i say far from it <laughs> so again i'm pushing it down it's coming away pushing it down it's coming away in a minute it'll stay there just have to have a bit of patience with craft card i'm just gonna and you can do one side at a time if it's easier and you know you can push against those score lines because it's going to be the right size and you just squash that down squash that down this one's been a little bit naughty so i'm going to take my scoring tool and put some force on it you will go and stick there you go that's what i needed a force for school tall tall <laughs> there we go so we've got our little one there and obviously i've already made another one one i made earlier like so now the only difference with these so what I'll do, what i think i'll do is show you how to make the drawers as well so with the drawers i'll do the big one first because you've got more vision to see what's going on so again you need to take your ruler and if I start this way, because I know what's going to happen. So, fold it up against the ruler. Put your ruler on the score lines. I've pre-folded these. One, two, three, like that. Turn it around. Now, what you need to notice is on this side, this is where your little lip is to pull the drawer out. So, there isn't a score line that goes across the middle. So, you're just going to go on the outsides only. Move it up and then get that one. Then get that one and that one and then turn it around and just get the two sides to come in like that. Now the reason I've designed it like this is A, so you don't see any of the score lines, but B, to give it so much strength because this is something you can feel year after year. Another thing I really want to point out to you is don't forget this doesn't have to be um, a gingerbread house, okay? It could be anything. Now my grandson made one of these up. And what he did was he didn't cut any of the things out. He just coloured it all in and then made it into the house. So you can do a lot more things with it, um, you know, than just be a gingerbread house. You could fill it for birthdays or anything like that. So where that little bit, where that line would have been, if it had gone all the way across, and then that section there up to the first school line, doesn't matter if it goes over, as long as it doesn't go over the second one, going to put some glue push that down and fold it back so that's your lip that's how you do your lip so you've just got it there like that so i'm just squashing it down and then pushing it out like that so now you've got your lip on there you can see that that's what's going to happen okay so then with these ones these are going to be you're going to glue on the right side again but they're actually getting tucked in so pull them forward like that add your glue like this smear it down put probably a little bit too much on there and then you're going to pick that up and pull that in like that and then that is on the inside so you're making like a little box if you like oh <laughs> well you are making a little box didn't know it could pop but there you go learn something new every day and we're just gonna get that to stick like so you just need to get those four sides to stick now the other thing that it, you'll notice i'll do one side at a time so the other thing that you'll notice, you need to get them so they're fairly accurate on the, because if you push it in, it'd be too small and they'll fall out. If you keep it too wide, they'll be too big and won't fit in the box. So you need to kind of do it where I designed it. And then this last flap, you just put a bit of glue on that and just go around the edges more than anything. And then just smear it all over. 
and that folds in so that's covering up all of the workings you can see there it's covering up all of the lines from the print but it's also covering up all of these little tabs and working so it's a nice neat and it's also mega strong because i thought if i didn't want to have the let you know you get those ones where you've got the little cutouts because they're going to just get floppy with time i really wanted to design it and i thought having a built-in one rather than have to cut out another load of pieces and stick it on and it is double thickness card so it's going to be nice and sturdy to use time and time again i'm going to put my glue on this last flap over this side and just get that to go down i'm going to show you again with the smaller one but it's not quite the same because it doesn't have the lip so that goes in there and that folds down so then we've got a box so just make sure everything's all in nice and tight and then we've got our box and that's where you cut out your number we can put one on there let's just put one on there number one so when you cut out the numbers make sure you've cut off all the black of them on the print And obviously they can be random because you want them to be random more difficult to find the better i wouldn't put the numbers on first because you might get glue all over them and things like that dirty fingers so i'd do them all at the end just showing you one so that you've got an idea where to go with it i don't want to go and do the whole lot because that'd be a really long boring video you just need to have the know-how how to make your drawer so that's the first drawer this is a little drawer and what you'll notice about this one or you may not um is that it doesn't have the little lip and you know we've got that bit where it comes up i don't think i've folded it properly where it comes up like that just reinforce these folds i probably just put the ruler on it and gently did it didn't reinforce it so they come up this one has a fold in this one doesn't because this is where the gingerbread man is going to sit or lady so what we're going to do is this is the back okay because it's going to be strong on the front with the gingerbread on there so let's just do those and that and make the back of it so let's pop that on there and we're going to do that there is going to be a, a small charge for the all the artwork and everything and you can get it on Kofi or Etsy and the link is in the description so just do that so you've got that one done and then we just need to make the front just with the tabs like so There we go. Uh, stick that down like that. So that's the one for the gingerbread. Like now, if you're not doing the gingerbread one, you're doing the bigger one. You just need to make print out, and make two more of the bigger boxes. So there we go. That's that one. So that's a draw. Now with the draw, what I do with the draw is I when I, I wait to the end and the house is made. Um, before I put the drawer in and just make sure that when you do it you've got the thick bit at the back and the thin bit at the front but we'll do that together in a bit because you need to know the height where to put the gingerbread man and things like that so oh I don't know why I'm doing that up we need to put these boxes on don't we so I'm just going to glue these boxes on now I've got a couple of tips for this so when you make the box pop it on they've all been designed to fit and in a minute you see a bit of magic when it all comes together so push them back a bit i should push them back a bit more we'll do this one because it's at the front so you just put that one in roughly where you think it's going to go because we know it doesn't stick straight away and i like to turn it over <laughs> i don't like to drop it i like to keep it on there ideally so i like to turn it over like that it's moved too much now i should have waited a little bit longer wash it down just hold it in place a little bit then i'll take a drawer now i've got one that i'm i've been using the whole time and i'll just pop that in because that's a test like if it's really tight you push it out okay just make force those sides out 
make sure it's nice and straight if it's too loose then you can push them in so this is your chance to get the boxes to fit nicely in there and that's a real snug box and i quite like that being snug mine that i made before it was a little see if you push it out it's become looser now so that's what you do and then when it's in the right position you can go back and rub it all down etc and that's what you're going to do for all of them so we'll put the little one on and then I'll pause the video and then just glue those on because they do need to be in place to finish the house. But you only need to see me doing two. So I'm just rubbing the glue down again. Same thing, just pop it on like so. Rub that down. Turn it over make sure it's in the right place. I don't want to put the drawing on this one though. Um, I've got one little drawer made, but because it hasn't got anything on the front of it yet, it might be difficult to get out because I haven't got a tap on it. So I just have to hope this one works, but I have designed it so it should. So I'm not worried. And don't forget, you can always make another drawer if, you know, make it a little bit tighter or a little bit looser if it really doesn't fit. So you can see now how it's coming together and they're all going in there. So I'm just going to pause the video and just carry on and stick those down so you don't have to watch that. Okay, so I've just glued all those onto the back like that. So I just let them... And you can see that's what the front looks like. So it's all done and ready to go. I don't do any of my decorating on it until the end actually so just so you know so these are the little drawers that we made out one of them is a tester drawer and this is going to be the chimney so let's show you how to do the chimney so when you've cut it out so you've got your score lines and again you're going to use your ruler and you're going to you know do your folding etc now the chimney is quite easy it's only got a tab that folds into the right uh, wrong side and then it's got two long sides that have got tabs on. And they're going to come up and form the chimney like that. So you're going to glue them. And then this again is just giving you a bit of sturdiness to the top and hiding some of the tab. You don't want to, you won't be able to fold a long one in. So it's just a little short bit just to make it look a little bit better, a little bit stronger. Because obviously if you're using it year after year, you're going to be putting things in there. Children are going to play with it, or the adults. It's not ages, this. You can have it at any age. <laughs> oh, I just feel mine with gold, eh? <laughs> Imagine what you could put in there. Quite cool. I'm just going to fold them up. I'll get those out of the way in a minute. So you can see, now, like I say, craft card won't glue first, second, maybe even third time. So just line them up. Get them roughly where you want them and we'll go over they'll probably come undone before i get to do it so i'm not going to spend too much time on it and these you're gluing it on the right side of the chimney but it's going inside of the chimney pot box so smear it down like so just slide that in going in there you go look it's typical it stuck didn't it so again we're just going to be making sure they're on the corner nice because again obviously the lid's got to fit it so you don't want it to be too big too small etc etc i'm just going to leave it like that for a minute because i know it's not dry but if i put these tabs in it'll hold it in the right place so again a little bit of glue on the tabs glue it down smear it down and fold them in so it's giving you the right width but it's also hiding a little bit of the tabs and giving you extra strength on the top i know two sides don't have that strength but it was too big to sort of like make it on the sheet so with all of my um, projects that i design i do it so you can print them on a4 or eight and a half by 11 they fit both so unless it says otherwise you just have to print it at your size and i do have a video on that so just make sure your printer settings are on actual size because i've designed it but to be honest that's only if you're going to be printing it on a4 if you're shrinking them down you can make little miniature houses you don't have to cut any of the windows out remember all the printing's on the wrong side 
so you can make little ones so lots of um, fun you can have with these even just knowing how to make that as a box really so the chimney lid looks really complicated but it's not it's just all i've done is i wanted it to be double strength all the way around so it's nice and thick so with this one again these tabs are going to come in like this they're going to go in so you're forming like that box shape in the middle they're all designed so they won't overlap you know and then you're obviously going to push all four sides in and glue them so if we do like a bit of glue there bit of glue there bit of glue there <laughs> so i'm just going to form the box and put the tabs over all in one go and then those, those sides will be held in and it's a really nice like sturdy lid i'll fold them back out of the way and then i can just push that down and then we know they're at the right distance like that i'm just gonna lay it down rub it down and i can get my scoring tool in there just make that glue stick all the way down to the bottom like that and then again to be honest you don't really need to glue these because they're so tight when they're all in they don't move but the glue will ensure they don't so like that like that now don't put the number on the lid until it looks right you know like wait till it's on the house um and then you know that which way around the chimney is and things like that so proof is in the pudding there you go one nice together box and lid it fits lovely it's like i designed it which is great so we've got our box chimney box and lid made we've got our all our outsides done because i've done the others so gingerbread people okay so what you'll notice on one of the sheets i had those gingerbread men now believe it or not that is the same size <laughs> as these okay that is exactly the same i've got two girls there where's my little boy where are you boy so he goes on there you can see it's exactly the same thing now the reason he's so square there is obviously he's going to have a box on his back so he's going to be carrying some nice little gift there so he will have this box on his back now to cut that out in just the card you've printed on so like the colored ones it's going to be too thin where it's going to be pulled in and out let me just take a draw off of um the box house i've made so you grab it by holding on to the gingerbread man and pulling it out so i've backed it with that gingerbread card now i didn't go in and cut all around that i know that that area is, is going to fit so I'm just, i've just cut it all out like this roughly and then i'll just smear the glue i won't bother too much because we've already got one cut out and just layer anywhere it doesn't matter it doesn't have to be in the same place just layer on there make sure that she's stuck down and then when it's dry cut her out so then you've got a double thickness of um gingerbread so that makes it a lot easier to play with so you can see the box is on the back of the gingerbread man and there's a foam pad between them to have that little space to grab your gingerbread and pull the drawer out so yeah I was really happy when I did it. I was like, yeah, it's all working exactly as I wanted. So now we've got this um, house as well. But the roof structure has to go on the house. If you're making the one with this, if you're not cutting out the one that's got pre-snow on it and you're making the snow, so you're going to have a porch that sticks out from the house. What you need to do when you cut this out, you've got a skinny side but you've also got a wider side now the wider side goes to the back of the porch the reason it's skinny is because the snow's quite thin and I'll, you don't want the um, card showing through so it's only to hold the snow on so you're going to glue on the right on the wrong side of this because it's going around the back and it's attaching to the back of the porch we're not going to put it on the house yet because it's easier to have the house everything flat you'll see in a minute when I add it and build it up 
so we're just going to put some glue on there and then just pull it around and glue it in place like this i'm going to probably turn it around so i can see make sure i'm in the right place because it might be a bit skew whiffy so just make sure that's in the right place and that's at the top and that's on the side there we go so just gonna do one at a time i think it's in the right place so i could just put it into the score line there and then fold it down put it onto there i'm gonna hold it down just make sure they take like that and this is a very skinny fold, I know, and the craft card is splitting apart there. It won't matter because the snow will cover it all up. But there you go, you've got your like, nice little porch now to go on the front. So we've done the porch. What else have we got to do? I think that's it until the house is built. So I need to zoom back out so that we can build the house now. So I'll just get all that ready for you and I'll be back. I'll just pause it. I'll be back straight away. <laughs> in your world in the watching world i'll be back straight away okay so these are all the bits that are going to build the gingerbread advent calendar together all you need is a base card so this is um let me measure i can't measure five i think it's five remember not measure five and three quarters yeah by seven and a quarter so it does tell you that's obviously if you're cutting it at actual size if not whatever that length is there and that width is there as the size so you can see it's exactly the same size so what we're going to do this is the front we just built the front goes at the front the back flips at the back and then the sides go to the sides now if you want the chimney on the side i've got it on the right it doesn't matter you're going to need to lay it down the side you want it if you want it to be at the back on the other side you can it doesn't really matter if you get it the opposite way so what we need to do now is just stick this now because craft card takes long i'm wondering whether to use tape i'm just not sure if it will stick very well with um, craft card but we'll find out won't we i'll just put a bit of tape on here i think what i'll do is tape and then glue as well and hopefully the tape will instantly grab and the glue can do it later because you've done all this work we want to make sure it's gonna stick i would normally just use wet glue because it's so permanent but just make sure you're putting the tape on the tabs by the boxes okay so we take our piece of card and now we need to stick them all on i think i might do the sides first i'll do the front last because it's too close it's very close to me and i don't want to knock it so just take off that tape here and i'm going to add some glue as well so wherever the tape is if i can see the shine of the tape i'll put the glue around it so the tape's going to be able to grab if i put the glue over the tape then it won't it's, it's like a little cheat of wiggle time but we don't want it to have wiggle time now this craft card is going to be on the bottom so it doesn't matter which way up it goes unless you're worried about that so just make sure it's all in line before you push down because obviously like i say it's tape so we're gonna pop that down there you can see there you've got one side on and put the other side on i think well it might be easier if i go round and round in a circle i don't know why i'm singing sorry don't want to hurt your ears <laughs> so this one's the back you know it's the back because it's got six boxes the front always has five just in case you needed to know so make sure you're gluing it to the base and not the other part of the house you can see the school line there like that pull it down again we'll spin it around sorry porch don't don't know what i'm saying sorry to cardboard porch for but you know you care about these things you spend time on them they're precious like one of my children okay might have gone too far there Bit delirious i'll show them where we're going it's the second time i've had it second time i had it first in um april 2020 when it first first came to the uk i was very ill never mind 
I'm still here. So, I'm going to push that tape because I know it's grabbed there, but not at this end until I've swung it in. But that was better actually using the tape, wasn't it? Because it did give us a straightaway grab. So now I'm going to just pick this up, slide it out of the way so I've got more room. Now when I designed this, my husband, I was drawing it. And I actually drew everything. And he goes, don't you want to test it and make sure it works or anything? I was like, no. <laughs> oh, you see what I've done? Oh my word, what have I done? I bet you're spotting on Sarah. I've put the side on. The, the front on the side. I've got to take it off. Bear with. I was chatting too much, wasn't I? That came off actually. You can see. It's fine because you're going to cover up the bottom with another bit. Actually, it'd be really nice to cover up the bottom with um, a white piece, maybe, and then put some trees and snow. I can't wait to see your creations. I've got a Facebook page um, inspired by Sarah Trabilco, um, where people share what they've made with my videos. It's only for that, so if you put anything else on, it gets taken down. But if you've made a project with any of my videos and you fancy sharing it, please do so inspires everyone else to have a go because a lot of these projects i'm going to put some more tape on there because i pulled that one off um a lot of my projects they look complicated but they're actually not and i love it when people do things and share because it shows it it's not just me doing it and there are some crackers on there really good so now i'll put this where it's meant to be shall i be a good idea so the last one can't really see it. it's a bit too far away for me and it's got the shadow i think i caught it in the right place i'm just going to move that along there like that so now you've got that like splay of house so what happens i'm going to move these out of the way is you'll see they all actually touch so it's really good because you know everything it's going to come together in the right place now when i did that and the first time i made it obviously was the only time i've made it this is the second time i've made it and i was just like oh my goodness so what i did <laughs> i thought i was an architect it's like look what i just did so now what we need to do uh these tabs that are on the side need to have glue put on them and i'm going to use glue and I know they're on the other side. You can flip it over and add glue. So you can see what it looks like now on the back. So you can cover this with either white or another piece of craft card. So these are the next thing that needs to be done are these tabs. You're just going to put glue on these. And I want the maneuverability. I don't want the tape to catch it in the wrong place. Put it on both of these sides here. Don't forget actually i'm going to flip it over before i do this the chimney i didn't tell you about the chimney so the lines that are on the chimney you've got black lines there you need to cut those and then put a score around all the others and fold it out okay so just make sure that they're cut and scored before you do this final thing so now i'm gonna just try and show you what i'm doing all i'm really doing move that out of the way a bit I'm going to pull this down and just make sure they come in together. Do one side at a time. Just push against it. I'm rubbing it away. So, and then we'll do the other side. Make sure that's on there. And you are going to be covering this with gems and all sorts of things. So don't worry if you get a bit of glue on it. I really want this to take. I'm going to go in underneath because you've got the tab there. If I fold that back. You can see that's where the tab's going and it fits perfectly. I've designed it so you've got that room with the tab. The tab is the right size, so make sure you cut it to the size I've given you. Don't want to stick, does it? Maybe I should have done tape. For speed, I mean, not I would use glue anyway, but push against something. Hold it up like that. 
I'm just going to push against it. You may lose sight of what I'm doing. I'm just going in there, pushing down. Hopefully that's in the right place. don't know that it is. No, it's not. Come on, don't be naughty. I need more glue on there. There's not enough glue now. It's rubbed so many times, it doesn't want to play. I wish I'd put tape on it now. Up you go. Just going to have to hold that there for a minute. Put a bit of pressure on it. Typical, isn't it? Like the main structural part is being the naughtiest bit. Tape definitely did go quick, didn't it? If I can get to the others to take them, I will. And tape it while it's flat, you see. It's easier. Right. Right, we're home and dry there. So you can see the inside, how it's coming together. I'm just going to pause it for a minute because I don't want to move that around. I'll just let it dry. Okay, it's fairly dry. I'm just going to move it around to the side. Try and get these out of the way. That's not bending in the right place. I don't want it to... Better leave it because it's bending where I've stuck the boxes on and not where it should be bending. It wants to that way when I try and turn it that way because the structure's got boxes in there. I don't want to play. So I'm going to put tape on these bits now. So that's what I'm doing. I'll try and show you. Move down without breaking. There's a love. Got to show the people. So I'm going to put tape on now. Probably not very well because it's in the air. So that's what I say. Tape it all up first on the right side. I'm just going to take a bit of tape and pop it on there. Like that. This is finger lift tape that you can tear up. I have got links to all the things I use in my description. Turn it that way because it fits better, the shape of it. Now, hopefully, this will go a little bit quicker. <laughs> we need to take these off. Come on. I always talk to it, don't I? When, you know, when you don't do it, I always go to the other side and I'll do the other one and see if they're friendly. That's the trouble, like I say, with the fibrous craft card. I tear the, If it doesn't do it, I'll tear the tape in the middle and then you can get one side exposed. That's what's really good about this tape. If it's not going to come from the end, you can always tear it halfway along. And it's not going to, so I'm just going to tear it. And it stays behind. You are going to have the poles on these corners anyway, so they're going to help reinforce it. Everything's been designed to help reinforce and stop things opening and things like that. So we can now close that up. We've got the boxes in there, so we know that it's going to go to the edge. Like I say, that see that join there because they're going to come round. That's that's showing a little bit of a join. But, like I said, it doesn't matter because we're putting the poles on. The candy poles. So I'm going to turn it upside down now. That tape still doesn't want to take. Because it's not touching, I don't think. So I need to put it upside down. I don't even see what I'm doing. But I am going to just get them in the place they need to be. And then, using my scoring tool, or my finger, push down on that tape. I'm just going to push it in using my finger on the inside of it. I'm just going to check that it's gone in. Yeah. So I'm just going to do that again. I'm just going to rub down all the way to the bottom with the scoring tool. So hopefully that's all done now. So you can see. All the boxes are on the inside. Now you can reinforce this if you want to. So if you get some seven by what was it a quarter that way, and you can put things in between the boxes. I don't really think it needs it. What I do like to do though is you need to make sure the chimneys well the chimney will go where the chimney goes, but you need to put the chimney in afterwards. But I like to take another bit of card and just pop it in there because. That one seems a bit short. I wonder if I've got one that's a little bit longer. 
Oh, it may be that it's because it's not done up yet. It needs to be pushed in, yeah. That's all it is. So we'll put one side on. And then what you'll notice is this one has a flap. This one doesn't. So what that means is that if when you stuck these two sides in like this, if you've got a piece of card in there, you've got yourself a gift box on the top. Okay, which would just tuck in here and tuck in on the top like that and it will meet in the middle and you've got yourself a gift box. So not only is it structurally helpful and you can use a chimney pot to open it, you know, pour on the chimney to open it. So you can do that or you can just seal it up. I'm going to seal mine up because I wouldn't put anything in there anyway. They've got enough with their 24 gifts. So because it's they're all the same height, these boxes, you can just put glue all around the edge. All around the edge, all on the top like that. I'm not even going to rub it in. And just put a bit of card in there. And that'll just help stabilise everything. And then we need to get these, all these little pieces in and secured so again i wish i'd put tape on this before i did it but i'm, I'm going to just glue it so i'll push that down in a minute i'm going to put glue this side and they go on the back like that and you just need to make sure we're in the right place you can get your hands in on the roof one quite well so you're just going to have to rub it a couple of times, like that. And I think what I'll do is just pause the video. While I'm, all I'm going to do is pop all these in and put a bit of glue on that one. Well, no, I'm not actually. I'm going to wait because I need to fix the chimney. In fact, I might even just wait and do... So I've got some room. I might just wait with all of this and get that chimney in. So I'm going to leave that one down and just put these sides in. I'm going to do these sides first because I need the access to see, um, make sure that the chimney's all nice and secure in there. It should be fine anyway, but because I only made it once and it was a, a long time ago, because like I said, I got sick. So it's been a long time since I've come back to this. This is the only second time I've made it. So I want to make sure that the chimney fits okay if it does then you can just go ahead and make it all up, all of it up and then do the chimney at the end some more glue on this one let's go down the side here like that and just pop some glue on there So with that chimney, like I said, so this isn't stuck as we know. I'm just going to pause and let that stick and come back and do the chimney. Okay, that's strong enough now to be able to take it. So remember I did the cuts on the black on the wrong side and then the scores. So it basically folds in like that. Now what you need to do is put some glue on all of these. And to be honest with you, it is so tight, it'd be fine it's a really tight fit on purpose i made it so that you have to really kind of force it inside of there just trying to wipe my finger i've got too much glue on my hand there and then what you do is you get your chimney pot or chimney or make sure that like if you've got a side you don't want to be seen so much put it to the back and you can see you might have to go that way where there's not the fold so much and you are literally pushing it in so what you want to do now is is get your gingerbread house and make sure that it's like nice and flat so push it in till it's flat or pull it back out a little bit just make sure i've designed it so it will sit in there like that's pushed right in you can see that it's been pushed right in and then if you look on the inside these bits here you can squash them i hope you can see what i'm doing you can squash them against the chimney and that'll hold it in place. You've got the glue on them, on those four sides. And you can also put a bit of tape on there um, before you close it up. So just do all that. 
and rub it down and there you go your chimney pot's now in place so the lid will come on and off like so and this is all going to get stronger and stronger but if you wanted to put some kind of brace on the inside because you've used a uh, floppier card you can put something you know up against the chimney for instance you could make a fold and pop it in there like you know just a roll of paper and then you can close that down or if you're um, keeping it as a box and you'll just tuck it in like that so you just tuck it in but like I say I'm going to glue mine um, and pop that so it's just literally going to be gluing these two pieces and that there that's all we've got to do to close it up and like I say so what I mean by make a brace so if you put a bit of paper in there and measure the height it's you know that high so you can make it, it can be a bit smaller so you can make like a brace I'm just going to do it in roll like this you'd obviously make it bigger I've, I've not got bigger big enough piece of card but make the card taller you can just make up a nice brace like that and you can glue that side to the chimney or underneath the chimney like that can you see it's gone in there but you'd want it to be taller so you can measure the height that you want when it's in the middle without it interfering on closing there so whatever that height is there because you don't want it to come over the edge of this you don't want it to be poking out like that but you can make a brace in there if you want to or like i say you can have it as a gift box it's an extra gift box so it's entirely up to you and you can decorate the inside of that make it really really pretty so we're just going to be adding glue to these two sides here and they're going to be tucked in glue along that tab and then glue on the right side of this because it's getting tucked in smear it down and then it's a waiting game for it to dry so I'll pause the video again in a sec just so that we can come back to it all dry and ready and raring to go okay so we're just going to pop those in like that tuck it in and then like so just going to push against all of those and let it dry so i'm just going to squash them down and let it dry and i'll be right back well it's fairly dry it's dry enough for us to continue anyway so the front has got the five pockets five boxes and the sides have got the two so we're going to put the portrait no we won't put the portrait on because we can go around and do these so we can put these lots of things are going to get covered up now so if you've made a few little mistakes don't worry about it because they're all going to get covered up with this now ideally you want to know exactly where halfway is and i couldn't print on the back as well as the front but i'm just going to guess it it's how i roll today <laughs> so i'm just squashing it again against the ruler like that putting the poles on the edge and they will cover up so if you wanted more to be on the front or more to be on the side then you've got it so again we could put tape on that for speed i'll just show you i think i'll do it on the front because i can just show you how to decorate parts of it if you like because i think the video will go on too long otherwise obviously you're going to put four poles on but we might only put two on we'll try and do like the front of it try and get it so it's fairly straight and then fold that around I like that and glue it down that's all you need to do actually take work better I'll use glue I oh know this covering the light up so I haven't folded this one have I so we'll just do that again and you can add glue as well but obviously I'm a little bit time constricted on the video so just gonna go get it gently going and I also put peel-offs on mine on the edges of it if you've got white peel-offs they look really nice but you don't have to so you can see there where that wasn't like the best join it covers that up so it's pretty cool really like that so you do need some glue on these as well because that tape that finger lift tape has only got tape in the middle but you, you get my gist then we can pop you can see here that's where that goes okay so we'll pop that on we'll just use some glue on that and 
and then I can show you how to do the gingerbread men and some of the snow as well. We want to put them on that craft carpet as well, don't I? And down the sides. Not very well done, that Sarah. And this wood should be completely covered smoothly so you don't get ridges on your white card. And then that's going to go over the whole of the box. Like that. It does fit down the bottom. It's been designed so it fits perfectly. So you've got lots of things you can measure on. You can rub down like that. So that's that. Then obviously we did our drawers earlier for that. And we've got another drawer here. And this is going to be the one that goes in the front porch door. And you can see this is why the green 24 is for there. Because it's going to be for that one. So... If you've got a wonky box, then you can use another one. That one's not been made the best. Might have been my tester one, actually. I might well have picked up the tester. I should pick up another one, see. Just in case, because it was like one I made that wasn't bothered about. No, that's worse. That must have been the tester. This must be a good one. Yeah, it's a lot firmer. So I pop that on, and it covers like the whole of the front of the box. So you get the whole of the effect of the porch door you don't lose too much of the green porch door so you can see you just need to put um your boxes in there so let's do one of the gingerbreads so remember we had like the double side that goes to the back and then that comes to the front and then we're going to put a foam pad on the back of a let's do the man because we can see now the reason i wanted it to be fully finished is you need to know that his feet are on the floor touching the floor so what am I doing I need to put the box in put the box in put the sticky pad on the box because you'll be able to pull it back out in a minute once the gingerbread man is in place and then get his feet to touch the bottom and then just lay him down and now you've got your drawer front so there you go, you've got your drawer front. So it's quite easy. The other things that go on, we've got the roof snow ridge. Roof snow ridge. Roof snow ridge. So again, this has got a line going through it. I've cut it all out. So I'm using a bigger ruler because it's a little bit longer. So this ridge, we're just going to bend it all along the centre like that. Get it going. Then we can take it down to your table and just give it a bit more of a fold to make sure it's going to go on the ridge nicer. Didn't actually catch that bit there. Need to reinforce that a little bit better. That score line. Just pushing it up to the ruler basically. Like that. So then that will sit along the top, like so. So again, you'll be gluing that in place. In fact, I may not glue it in place because you know what I'm going to be doing. I'll show, I'm will show. i just going to show you where all the pieces go. I think that's the best bet because the gluing is just going to take too long and too many pauses. So you do your roof ridge. Now this little piece of snow, I'll put tape on the back. So I could try and do this one. Take the tape off. This is for the chimney lid. So you just start where it's not going to be seen. And, it's, you know, you have it at the top, actually. That's where you do it, right at the top like that. And you just take it all the way around the top of the chimney lid until you meet. And then you can just snip that bit off. Probably a little bit more like that. And then that goes around there and just rub it all down. Make sure it's all on nice. And then that can go to the back because you don't want to see or whichever side you don't see it the most. Pop that on there and then we can pop a number on top of the chimney lid, you see. This is what it's all about. And it's up to you if you want the number to be facing that way. So if you get the lid where you're happy with it, it may be that when you sit it on there, it may be wonky, it may tilt. It may look better one way more than the other. So just get it to the side you want it on before you add your number. And if you want your number to be in line with the drawers on the side, then just pop it that way. I'm going to take it off because I can't see 
I've got it in the middle or not. There we go. I'm using my fingers on the back to squash against. So I've got our chimney lid on. That would be stuck down there. Then we um, do our fascias. Just trying to see. I must have cut that really well because I can't see which is the right side and which is the wrong side. So what I've designed is we've got this one. Then we've got this one. <laughs> It would have been easier if I glued it, would it? <laughs> then we put this one in place. Like that. Then what we've got are these little skinny ones. So they can stick up a little bit higher from the snow. Like a facial board would be. Just to, you know, like if you've got any discrepancies or anything like this, a cover up. So if you're happy with how your snow sits on your house and you're quite happy about it you don't need to put this ridge on but because that roof ridge you can see it so it annoyed me because that's me and then I just put that over the top so you don't have to do that if you don't want to but that's how they go the porch snow let me just find it this snow here this isn't the porch snow this is the straight piece of snow so that just goes on the edge here so this just goes over like that and you can fold it and pop it down. So you can put it on there and then glue it down to the edge. Or you can have it right on the edge like that. Just make sure it's away. So there will be a right and a wrong of this. Um, possibly the way you cut it. I'm not sure. Yeah, so you can see that's good. The droopy bits are going down the long bits now a lot better than when it was round that way. You may have to put it up a bit higher or cut it down. So you can fold it and have it going on the roof like I did. I put a little fold in mine. You don't want it to be interfering with the drawers there. So that's why it needs to go up a little bit higher and fold it or cut it down. I'll bring my original one back in and you'll see what I mean. So when I did it, I folded it there. Can you see? I've got a fold line going across there. And obviously decorated mine with gems and everything else. So that's what that one's for. And then I'm just trying to find the porch snow. There's a bit of porch snow there. There's quite a bit of porch snow. There's two little bits here. So there's all these pieces are for the porch. This is just the ridge. So you know, like we have the ridge on the top of the house. This is just, you need to fold it first. That's just the ridge to go on. That's not glued down properly. That's just the ridge to go on to there like that these little bits are going to go on the edges there on the sides and then this one is going to go on the front so you're just going to glue that onto the front like that and that's how you get that i'll show you on my one at the end so that's all those bits and then when all the roof snow and everything's on then you can add like your lollipop design in the center but you don't want to put it up too high too low you need to know once you've got all your decoration in how it's going to go now <coughs> excuse me i'm just going to show you as well how i did these strips of paper i know they've got a peel off along them because i just think it finished it off nice but how i made these ridges is so simple these snow ridges because i did design tiles and all sorts and it was just too much so all you need to do, just make sure you can see what I'm doing, is get a quarter of an inch strip of card. Start anywhere, but work up through the middle and just wave your scissors all the way up through the middle. Now it's up to you how narrow you want it to be. Bear in mind you've got to glue it down though. So just go wavy all the way up through the middle. And you might discard one side or you might use both. Depends how you've cut it and if you're happy with it. So just snip that off. And you can see that that is what I did. So you have to have the straight side up at the top. And that's how I made the snow ridges. So it's really, really simple and fun to do. Um, obviously, it's quite difficult for me to put it all into a very small video. But let's bring the finished one in again. So in case I notice anything that I haven't told you about. So this is the finished one. I don't want to lose all my little bits I cut out because I've got to finish that one properly. So you can see there, we've got the two drawers there. We've got, they, cut, they cut out completely as well. And the reason that I made boxes is they can't go in. They're, that's it. They're done. 
so I'll put glossy accents on my lollipop there you can see that was the first ridge second ridge then a peel off I'll put peel off down the side of my um, pole candy cane poles and then we've got number 24 in there I've got the two gingerbread peoples here and here hold my hands I've got our chimney pot box and then we've got all of our six boxes on each of the other sides one's falling out don't know where it is but it's here somewhere so there you go that's how you do it all so i hope that explained everything and i hope you enjoy making them and if you want to show your projects remember inspired by sarah jabilko and you can do so so have fun guys and i'll see you again real soon thanks for watching bye